Hey Marty here, welcome to The Sublime, to the Ridiculous Video Blog Edition. Uh, I talk about my Grandpa Joe a lot, I miss that old man. Uh, uh, I know he was tough to grow up with uh, based on what uh, my dad and many of my aunts and uncles have told me. Uh, but I guess the dynamic's a little bit different between, different between uh, grandchildren and grandparents. And uh, uh, don't get me wrong, uh, we had our times where we... Things got a little intense between me and Joe a few times. I mean, uh, but on the whole, we got along great, and um, uh, I really love the old man. Uh, I still think about him from time to time. Like recently, uh, mulberries, the mulberries were in, and uh, oh man, there used to be, well, they're all over the neighborhood now, but there used to be mulberry trees and mulberry bushes all up and down the alley by our old workshop, and I can still see Joe walking home or walking up from home or something. He'd always stop and like a little kid, picking picking those berries off and popping them in his mouth. Uh, you know, it's um, it it's a side I'm glad I saw, and it's a side I I, I look uh, back upon with some happiness. And um, um, you know, and um, I think he had a bit of a soft side. Yeah, that's going to sound weird to a lot of you to hear that, but um, and we had some fun too over time. Um, I remember one holiday years ago. I think it was the Fourth of July. Might have been Memorial Day or Labor Day or something. I don't know. But I was 10 years old, old enough to know that on holidays, even the shop was closed. Uh, so I'm playing around the backyard early one morning on this holiday, and my grandparents live next door, and the door opens, and my Grandpa Joe steps out, and I don't think he saw me, but he walks to the back gate, and he starts walking up the alley. Um, clearly suspicious behavior. Clearly behavior on the part of me, Grandpa, that required some sleuthing. So um, he was a little ahead of me, of course, so I just sat down whatever I was doing, and I walked out our back gate, and um, I walked up the alley. I was a few steps behind him. Uh, he got beyond our shop and in the front door uh, before I got up there. By the time I got there, he was opening up the big truck doors at the back end, and he opens them up, and of course there's 10-year-old me standing there, and there's he standing there with a cigarette dangling out of his mouth, and of course the first thing he says, what you doing here, boy? And I just answered honestly, I'm wondering what you're doing. She goes, all right, come on. So we go inside. He had to do some welding job on the frame of one of his trucks. I think he called it an overloader or something, uh, something he had to weld onto the frame so he could put more weight on the truck. I believe that's what it was. Anyway, uh, we started with a cup of coffee because you always start a big job like that with a cup of coffee. And then... Um, uh, we got to work there. He fired up the welder and he marked everything off and um, I held the one piece up in place while he welded it and um, first time I was close to a welder so I was a little startled at first with all the spatter, splatter of the, you know, spark and shower of molten metal and stuff but um, he told me stay back out of the way and he gave me an extra welding helmet and now when I tell you put that helmet down, put that helmet down. You cover your, when I tell you to and you don't take it off till I tell you. Uh, to take it off, and um, once that first shower of molten iron came out, I was like, okay, I'll listen to you. Yep, no problem. I'll, I'll put it down when you say put it down. I'll take it off when you say take it off. And um, Anyway, um, we had to raise the truck a little bit in the air, and he's down on his knees, and I'm down on my knees, and I'm watching him weld through the welding helmet and holding a part up, and then I'm holding a light up for him. And um, it took us maybe 90 minutes, not a terrible job or whatnot, but uh, we finish it, and we clean up and uh, we shut the big doors and back truck doors and I'm going with him to go out the front doors and lock them and he stops, pulls out his wallet, hands me a five dollar bill. Now boy, if your mom or dad asks where you got it, you worked for it. If they say who'd you work for, you say you worked for Joe. Yeah, no problem, no problem. Five dollars to a ten year old boy in 1970, I hit the lottery. I was in nickel Hershey bars forever. What is that, about 100 of them? 50 of them? It's a lot of them anyway. So, uh, When I think of Joe, yes, yeah, sometimes I think of the harsh, intense moments. Uh, but the older I get, the more I tend to think about the, uh, the nice moments like that. The uh, day I earned my first pay with him, uh, probably doing next to nothing, but he still, eh. Gave me five bucks for it. I was really happy. Thank you for watching, listening. Please like, subscribe. Please comment in the comment menus. Um, in the meantime, this is Marty going from the sublime to the ridiculous. And I mean $5 in 1970 was like I had hit the lottery, let me tell you. <laughs>